In the headlines, Tribunal Sachs Governor Sule declares PDP's Ombogadu as Nasarawa State Governor. Bandits abduct district head at others in Taraba State. Abuja residents express happiness over Boasman price reduction. Away from Nigeria, Mexico church roof collapses during mass, killing at least 10, injuring 60. Hello and welcome to Trust News Update. I am Abdurrahman Umar. Thanks for joining me. And now, the news in full. The Nasrallah State Governorship Election Petition Tribunal on Monday nullified the victory of Governor Abdullahi Suleyn. The three-man panel, led by Justice Ezekiel Ajayi, while delivering the judgment via Zoom, said Emmanuel Umbogadu of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, is the winner. Two of the justices agreed that the election was won by the PDP, while one judge dissented. Ezekiel maintained that the petitioner was able to prove his case beyond reasonable doubt. Recall that the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, in Lafia, declared Abdullah Hisuli the winner of the governorship election in Nasrallah State in March. Ishaya Tanku, the INEC returning officer, had said the APC candidate polled a total of 3,407,209 votes to defeat his closest opponent, David Ombogadu. The candidate of the People's Democratic Party PDP, who got 2,816 votes. And in the meantime, the Adamawa State Governorship Electoral Petitions Tribunal on Monday dismissed the petition filed by Umar Adru against Governor Amadou Fintri. Umar Fintri. The governorship candidate of the Social Democratic Party, Umar Arlo, his deputy, Amos Yusuf, and SDP filed a petition challenging the governorship election conducted by INEC on 18th March 2023. Arlo, in his petition instituted on the 8th of May 2023, joined INEC, Fintri, and 16 others as respondents alleging that the election was not conducted in substantial compliance with the Electoral Act. The petitioners further alleged that the exercise conducted by the first respondent was marred by corrupt practices, bribery, threat and violence, seeking the nullification of the entire exercise. In her judgment, the chairman of the tribunal, T.O. Oloho, declared that the petition is incompetent, deceptive, in Congress and not properly instituted before the tribunal. Justice Oloho stated that the petitioners had loomed the ground of corrupt practices and non-compliance with the Electoral Act as well as failed to file a written statement of names of witnesses they intended to call. She dismissed the petition and awarded the sum of 400,000 Naira in favor of Ainek Fintri Prof. Kalefwa and PDP against the petitioners. Meanwhile, the River State Governorship Election Petition sitting in Abuja has dismissed the petition filed by the governorship candidate of the Labour Party of River State, Beatrice Etubo, challenging the election of Similai Fubara of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, following the declaration of Fubara as the winner of the March 18 governorship election. The LP and All Progressives Congress, APC, as well as their candidates, filed a petition before the tribunal. On September 13, the tribunal reserved judgment on the petition filed by Cole seeking the nullification of Obara's victory. The three-member tribunal led by Justice Cletus Amy Fournier adjourned the matter for judgment after the parties adopted their final written addresses and presented their arguments for and against the petition. However, ruling on the all peace petition on Monday, the Justice Amy Fournier late tribunal dismissed the petition for lacking in merit and for failing to prove their allegations. Now, the residents of Imo State are calling on the federal government and security agencies to prevail on the Imo State Governor Senator Hope Ozudima to desist from what they term his act of vendetta on members of opposition in party in the state. Ajibadi Press has the rest of the details. This is the residential home of one of the chieftains of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, Henry Madwakolam. 
According to him, the destruction done to his building is one of the activities of the hoodlums allegedly doing the dangerous and desperate beatings of the incumbent governor, who is bent on weakening the opposition in the state. He said they are doing this under the guise of Oweri Capital Development Authority, OCDA narrating her experience in the hands of the hoodlums when they came with a bulldozer to demolish the building madra Kolam's wife said it was a tragic moment for her and her family they said that from imo state government that sent them i said for what what have we done is there any crime we committed we are i'm a citizen of imo state citizen of nigeria is there any crime the policeman was ranting screaming Shout if I didn't get here and he will shoot me. That I should move back. Everybody that came out in the streets, they are dropping them with, with, with gun. On his part, Henry Madrakolam said no amount of intimidation will make him back out from supporting his party to victory. While condemning the act, he urged the authorities to call the incumbent governor to order. They opined that Nigeria is a multi-party system and the governor should not be allowed to perpetrate acts capable of jeopardizing the already fragile peace of the state. When has it turned to a crime for somebody to be a member of a political party? Must everybody be in one party for goodness sake? Must everybody be in one party? Politics of intimidation will not help our state. It will not. We are not. We are not in one man party in Imo State in the whole Nigeria. We have a position. We have the main party. What's the problem? I just even don't know. My, I was traumatized. Shutting me with God, with my age father. Oh God. The group also proceeded to a business premises belonging to another PDP chieftain, Evangelist Mike Ikoku, and pulled down his back gate and harassed the workers there. This current attack is the third one in less than six months this year, a scenario the manager of the business said is very unhealthy for development. On this lane, we have about 14 bar. At every time they want to attack, is this place first. And if they want to remove anything, they don't do it in a gentleman way. They just come, destroy. It's because of politics. Politics should not affect the business. So many people are working inside here. When contacted, the Commissioner for Information in the state said the claims may not be true and promised to investigate the matter. In the meantime, it is hoped that the government at the federal and other powers that be will look into the matter with a view to calling the perpetrators to order. Ajibade prays. Trust TV News, Oweri. Now, the district head of Malam Alungoro in the Arokola local government area of Taraba State, Bello Alungoro, and eight others have been abducted. It was gathered that the armed bandits who were in their numbers stormed the village and operated for hours on challenge. A resident of the area, Buba Alungoro, told the newsman that the attackers arrived at the village around 9 in the evening and spent about six hours operating. He further explained that the whereabouts of the victims are still unknown, while the abductors are yet to contact their families, a situation he says has thrown them into fear. Similarly, another 11 persons were abducted in Joro Bakari village of low local government area in the early hours of Monday. An eyewitness who confirmed the attack said the bandits were in significant numbers. When contacted, the state police public relations officer SP Abdullahi Usman said the command was not aware of the incident. The incident is coming barely 72 hours after the killing of a pregnant woman and abduction of many in Yualwa, Abere village of Jalungo local government area. Now, no fewer than eight persons were killed and three others injured in an attack by yet-to-be-identified assailants at Adukol district of Basa local government area of Plato State. The attack was carried out on Sunday evening at a market square in the community shortly after the people returned from the Sunday morning service. One of the early callers to the community in sympathy with the bereft was the member representing Joss North, Basa Federal Constituency, Musa Aga, who described the attack as inhuman and criminal. He assured that the legislature will continue to enact laws that will discourage such unprovoked attacks in communities who are called on the executive.
to implement such laws to the benefit of citizens. Narrating his experience on the SART incident, Njuma Avu, who lost two of his children to the assailants and six relations, expressed dismay at the attackers who stormed the village and executed the Distatli Act, shooting at the people who were at the mini market square. The deceased, comprising of five males, one female, and two minors, have been buried at the village cemetery, while the injured are receiving treatment at the hospital. The police is yet to confirm the incident. Two suspected human traffickers have been nabbed by the operatives of the Nigeria Security and Civil Defense Corps, NACDC, in Ondo State. Baba Tunde Oluwasola, a 56-year-old carpenter, and Fawue Dada, a 47-year-old trader, were nabbed after the duo allegedly recruited three girls from the state capital, Akure, to Libya, for alleged trafficking. The public relations officer of the NSCDC in Ondo, Daniel Edeme Bo, disclosed the arrests of the two suspects in a statement issued to reporters on Monday. Edeme Bo explained that the girls were recruited around April 2023 by Baba Tunde, popularly known as Osale, through the assistance of Fawoe, also known as Ia Alazo. He added that the suspects have already made their confessional statements and in that after investigation, their case will be transferred to the National Agency for Prohibition of Trafficking in Persons and Other Related Matters, NAPTIF, for further action. Now, President Bola Tinubu has approved 35,000 Naira as a provisional wage award for all Treasury paid federal government workers for a period of six months. Minister of Information and National Orientation Mohamed Idris announced this in a statement on Sunday in Abuja. He said that this followed consultations between the federal government and the leadership of the labor unions at the presidential villa. At the meeting, the federal government also pledged its commitment to fast track the provision of compressed natural gas CNG buses to ease public transportation occasioned by subsidy removal on PMS. The federal government also committed to the provision of funds for micro and small scale enterprises as well as waivers on VAT on diesel for the next six months. It also announced the payment of 75,000 Naira to 15 million households at 25,000 per month for a three-month period from October to December. Now, the Nigeria Labour Congress, NLC, and the Threat Union Congress, TUC, say both unions have gone back to their organs to intimate them on the resolutions reached at the Sunday's meeting with the federal government. Some of the resolutions include a provisional wage increase of 35,000 Naira for all categories of federal workers for the next six months, and suspension of VAT on diesel for the next six months, among others. In this report, Noel Samson speaks to a policy analyst and some Nigerians on their take on the concessions made by the federal government. Report. At the meeting, the federal government agreed to commence payment of 75,000 Naira to 15 million households at 25,000 Naira per month for a three-month period from October to December 2023. Government also committed to the provision of funds for micro and small-scale enterprises. Despite this commitment, many still wonder if these concessions will positively affect the bulk of Nigerians groaning under the economic hardship occasioned by the removal of fuel subsidy. Also on the lips of many is the thinking that should this track be cut off, will it amount to labor being boxed into a corner? From what we've heard and read, um, this is primarily targeting the workforce, uh, the federal government workers. And I'm not sure government, federal government is in a position to, you know, uh, support all of the states. So, by and large, uh, whatever is approved or agreed on with Nigeria labor unions uh, cannot even affect the organized private sector. You cannot railroad them to say, okay, pay 35000 on top of what you are giving your workers and in negotiation there is what is called win-win approach so labor wins government wins no no losing of face but if in spite of what we were told after their four hours meeting on october one 
by the address by Femi Bajabi Amila. If Labour does not suspend or call off their strike, then it will mean that they are politically motivated. Nigerians on the streets of Abuja have different reactions concerning the concessions and whether the organized Labour should call off the strike or proceed with it. Uh, to my own opinion, they shouldn't call off the strike. And my reasons is this. Uh, for several occasions, governments have made promises to the masses, even to the workers, on how things will get better. But we keep seeing things increasing day by day. In fact, sometimes ago, I was listening to see news. I see people dying even of hunger. So when you talk about going back that they shouldn't go for the strike, I don't agree with that because government hardly keep to their promises. I want the NRC to, to go on with the strike. To go on with the strike. The reason is that the 25,000 naira increment is for the federal government staff. We have the state government workers. We have the local government workers. And we have, and you know that in Nigeria, most of the labor forces is the private sectors. The private sectors are the ones suffering this. Most of the people that are being employed by the private sectors, their salary is very low. You know, the continuation of strike will not help us as a Nigerian because it will affect so many things. What I think should happen is uh, the negotiation. So we'll be the one to help all of us. Nigerians are waiting to know if the organized labor will suspend the strike or proceed as planned. No, Samson, Trust TV News, Abuja. You're watching news update on Trust TV coming off after the break. Small business operators lament lack of government support. Details of these and more after the break. Please stay with us. Welcome back. If you are just joining us, this is the news update on Trust TV. And here is a recap of some of our top stories. Tribunal sacks Governor Sule, declares PDP's Umbogadu as Nasarawa State Governor. Gunmen kidnap district hate at orders in Taraba State. Now, moving on to more stories. Nigerians have expressed happiness with the reduction of prices of was meant in the country. Trustee Ms. Kabirlal, who spoke to a cross-section of Nigerians in Abuja, has more. Nigerians, especially business owners, are heaving a sigh of relief following the recent reduction in the price of bois cement, which, according to people, will go a long way in improving the standard of living in the country. One of the impediments that has always hindered people from owning uh, whether private property or commercial property has always been, uh, among other factors, has also been the issue of the cost of cement. Uh, apart from the cost of land, cement is the other uh, item that takes a chunk of the cost of construction. Dealers in building materials also said the impact of the cement price review will pave way for the reduction in the exchange rate of dollars. What needs is a way to make sure that dollar crash down even to 700 naira, 700 naira or 600. It will make most of the things come, come down and people will be patronizing people, people will, be, people will start their projects once again. Some residents further explained that with this move, it will create an avenue for employment for the youths in the country. I myself, I stopped building since two years and day because of uh, this uh, cement of uh, something because i started buying cement when it was i started my work when cement was 1007 from 1007 to 5000 something now so it's not something to talk about but this very one when i just got this uh, current uh, good news um, in this country concerning what bua have done about reducing this very pr price of uh, cement it gives me so joy and uh, a lot of nigerians we are just so happy about that in fact it makes me start to walk back Graduate who sells block as a means of livelihood called on the government 
to extend the gesture to other sectors to enable youth cash in and contribute their quota towards the development of the country. Before now, if you have someone that will supply you directly from, uh, from the factory, they are talking of 4,750 per bag. Per bag. But if you are buying from containers, the, the, that is the retailers, they are talking of 5,000 plus. So you can see that the, the margin is, 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 is different and it's really affecting our, our business. In fact, in fact, I am so, so, so happy. If they will be able to achieve this, I'm telling you I will be the happiest man. The price has come down. We will now sit with our customers to see how we can you know, do a business that will support everybody. It can only affect us that have both stock. Because you cannot buy spend the rate of 4,000 something and now still sell it 3.5 or 3.8. It's not possible. So they need to wait for us to finish our own stock. Because if we start selling that, it will affect our own too. Resident further called on stakeholders in critical sectors of the economy to do the same in order to provide enabling environment for the development in the country. Kabir Lowell, Trust TV News Abuja. Small businesses mostly operate by the roadside. Small business operators in Kaduna State are lamenting over alleged government's non-commitment to the growth of SMEs in the state. Some of them who spoke to Trust TV in Kaduna say managing their business is challenging amidst the present economic realities. Trust TV's Bella Musa reports. Small businesses mostly operate by the roadside are finding it difficult to survive now due to lack of capital to sustain them. My mother gave me the capital as loan to buy tools and start the business. She sells the money through contribution. And our price now, our price now is too, is high. And customers always complain that it's high. And reason why our cost, our price is high, is that the materials we buy is very, is very expensive. They say they fund their business without relying on help, which according to them has never come to them. I have never received any financial assistance from government or from anywhere. There is no intervention from government, but I save from the small profit I make to improve my business. Because, uh, because uh, if I go to a bank, I don't even know where, where a person that will, uh, how to get the loan there. So that's why I don't go there to go and borrow loan. A business development consultant, Abdul Malik Sali, who says informal business operators find it difficult to access loans due to peculiar nature of their business. Because the conditions the banks, the financial institution used to give, the perpetrator cannot meet up those conditions. If you assess maybe there will be a typical example assessing 100,000, they will come to your they will come to your place. You must be a guarantor. You must be provide the guarantor that guarantees such amount of it. And secondly, the interest the interest they charge is high. The petty trader cannot meet to pay up the interest charges on a little like hundred thousand. Then by the time a small a maybe a micro micro institution gives you a loan of a hundred thousand, you end up paying about one hundred and forty thousand when you are returning back. At times you don't even meet up. And if you miss, if you miss a week or a monthly repayment, they have, the increase will multiply and will increase on this. Salusi says government to some extent did not ignore them, but blamed some operators of informal business. A typically, a typical trader, petty trader, when you receive some kind of fund, first of all, you look at it as if the government fund is not refundable, which is not like that. Like the typical of the nice loan that the, the last dispensation we gave to uh, SMEs, I'm definitely sure that 80 percent of that money will not be recovered. Some people collected loan between three, between below five million. Despite their nature, informal businesses generate employment for Nigerians. Hence, the need for the government to explore ways 
of supporting them. Bella Musa, Trust TV News Kedunan. Now away from Nigeria, at least 10 people, including three children, were killed and 60 more injured when the roof of a church came crashing down on a baptism in northeastern Mexico on Sunday, authorities said. The disaster struck the coastal town of Ciudad Medore in Tamaulipas state, where the Red Cross rescuer telling local media that 80 people had been in attendance at the Santa Cruz parish when the roof curved in. Governor of Tamaulipas, Americo Villarreal, told reporters at the scene of the disaster that 10 people are confirmed dead, five women, two men, and three children. He said rescue workers were attempting to recover the body of a woman from the rubble, but the death toll was not expected to rise as all of the missing had been accounted for. At least 60 people were treated for injuries, the governor said, with 23 still hospitalized. Church officials said a baptism was being celebrated when the ceiling collapsed. And now finally on sports news, world number three Daniel Medvedev booked his place in the China Open Men's Swami Finals with a 6-4, 3-6, 6-1 victory over Francis Hugo Humbert in Beijing on Monday. The 27-year-old will battle it out with either world number 10 Alexander Brave or Chilean Nicholas Jerry for a place in the final. Meanwhile, top-ranked men's player Novak Djokovic is not playing the China tournaments this season. Over the women's draw in first round, world number two Iga Swiatek defeated Spence Sarah Sorabis Tomo in straight sets. The ball, who recently relinquished her hold on the number one spot to Arena Sabalenka, enjoyed significant success and the night on her way to a 6-4, 6-3 victory. And with that... And with that, we have come to the end of the Trust News Update. Do not forget to follow us across all our media platforms and our YouTube live stream for more news programs and documentary. I am Abdurrahman Omar. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.